have an opportunity to comment on very high level concept plans that reflect the goals that uh, yourselves and the planning commission and the city council had an opportunity to weigh in on and that the council approved. And these goals uh, uh, are what these concept plans uh, reflect. And so you're going to be asked to look at those concept plans tonight and provide feedback. And uh, so in order to facilitate that process, uh, I just want to mention tonight we have John Chargo with Stantec. Uh, he'll be, after I make some introductions, he'll be taking you through this process. We have Roger Humphrey with Stantec, Mark Pugman from Stantec, uh, Jen Hasselbrook from the city of Oakdale, Mario Cucciarella, who is the developer, and then Emily Shively, who is the planner for, uh, for the city of Oakdale. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to John. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, every time we have one of these meetings, we want to sort of orient you to where we are in the process, just to remember where we've been and kind of where we're going. Uh, Bob's already talked about what the purpose is for this open house. We're at a very preliminary stage in the planning process, and we want to invite you to participate in that planning process. So I'm going to be clarifying what these drawings are and what they aren't, um, and talk to you about what the next steps are. And then there will be three stations. There will be one station back here, one over in the, the nature room over there, and then one out uh, in the hallway. All, all three of those stations have the three concept plans side by side. There's markers. You can write on them. There will be people there that can answer questions, and, and we just want to record whatever comments you have. Then in addition to that, there's a worksheet that asks you some questions and then gives you on the back the opportunity to once again share any comments that you, that you have. When we did this the last time, everybody's comments were recorded, and I'll show you kind of how they influenced the work that we did. But again, just to step back a little bit, this is property that's owned by the 3M Foundation, and they have decided to put the property up for sale. It was uh, previously part of the Amation campus. Uh, the land is guided in the city's comprehensive plan uh, as multi-use business park, and it's zoned planned unit development with an underlying land use of multi-use business business park. So we're talking about a comprehensive plan change. This is really just a little teaching tool that I use when I work with planning commissioners because it talks about the relative level of discretion that the city has in making a decision. So we're down here at the comprehensive plan level. The city is going to decide whether or not they want to change the comprehensive plan and if they do what that change will be to. So that's really what this process is about. So this is a graphic that illustrates the plan that was originally approved back in 1975. Uh, just to kind of orient you, it's, a, it's basically kind of a cartoon, but the building areas are shown in yellow. Uh, this is where the, the, the portion of a nation that was built is. So all of that is, is uh, uh, buildings, and then the gray is parking. And uh, one of the things that's notable is that a very substantial amount of open space was originally proposed to be retained around the perimeter of what was about 8 million square feet of business park. So very was guided and fully approved, full environmental review uh, to be built for that use. So in 1996, those plans were modified. Uh, 3M abandoned their expansion plans. They uh, sold the, the southern half, 208 acres of the site to Amation, and they constructed the building that's there today. Um, that building, uh, that campus has been purchased by the folks who own Slumberland, and they are repurposing that building and uh, remarketing the laboratories, and there's going to be an announcement at an upcoming city council meeting about some pretty substantial reinvestment that's being made in that facility. So that plan was modified to accommodate 1,800,000 square feet of multi-use business park. When we talk about what, what do we mean when we say we're doing a special area plan, when cities do comprehensive plans, there's a sort of a general depiction of which land uses are going to be. But sometimes if a community has an area where it, there's um, a particular opportunity, they can do a deeper dive and do a, what, what we call a special area study. Sometimes cities call them 40-acre studies or small area plans. The most recent one that we did with the city of Oakdale was where the High V is now. And we did a very similar, it's obviously a different size site, but we, we went through the same process. We did market research. Uh, we came up with concept plans. And then the city solicited uh, developers 
uh, and developers came. It was uh, and they they proposed the project and came through with uh, the high V and some uh, senior housing located here and some other related uses. So this is an example of, of what the final product could look like. So again, where are we in the process? We started this uh, in August of 2016. The city council approved the process. They told us what their expectations are for this process. Uh, and we identified roles and responsibilities. And then we uh, worked with the developer and his folks to assemble a great deal of information, uh, property history, all of the natural features on the site, the topography, the soils, the drainage, all of those things. We identified where the infrastructure is, the streets and the sanitary sewer and water. Again, we started the market research uh, and looked at a number of those different factors. So kind of a, a really robust research process. Phase two was when you folks were here in January and the 31st, uh, we had our first community open house. And uh, you folks came and we went through a process where uh, you responded to some questions and gave us some input, which we documented. Uh, we then took that information and met with the Planning Commission and City Council and turned those, uh, those statements, those kind of aspirational statements that came not only from them but from you into a set of goals and policies. And those goals were, were uh, as Bob said, actually approved by the City Council and that's what we're using now to prepare these two to three concept alternatives. So we're at a point right now where we're going to have you an opportunity, give you an opportunity to give us feedback about those very preliminary, very high level concept drawings. And we'll then do the heavy lifting of development feasibility, cost analysis, looking at all of the, the work that needs to be done to, to make those plans more real. Uh, before it goes back to the Council and Planning Commission, there will be another opportunity for you to see them and for you to comment on them before it goes back to the Planning Commission and Council. Following that, we'll, we'll move into the actual comprehensive plan amendment process. Uh, the document will be written up, the plans will be finalized, and it'll be processed through the Metropolitan Council, reviewed with surrounding communities, and so forth. Uh, and we're currently projecting that that would be sometime around August of uh, 2017. So again, roles and responsibilities. I think it's important for everybody to know that there really is just one land use authority in the city of Oakdale, and that's the elected city council. And so they were the ones that authorized this process. They were the ones that told us what their expectations were for the process. And they're the ones who make decisions at every one of the key thresholds as we go through this process. For you, one of the things that the council said very clearly is they want this to be a transparent process. They want lots of opportunities for people to see it at every step along the way. Um, but when we look at a situation like this where a city that's basically fully developed like Oakdale is and you have basically a vacant piece of property, there's really an opportunity to do something special. Uh, there's an opportunity to have some diverse housing options to be really efficient in terms of how we do the infrastructure. Uh, we can respond to some of the, the best new trends in terms of sustainability and healthy living uh, and also making sure that everything that gets proposed is grounded in market retail or re reality and can actually be built. Well, this, as you all know very well, is where the site is. It's on the eastern part of, of Oakdale up against Lake Elmo. We did uh, commission some market research and we are following the, the findings of that market research and, and looking at the land uses that we're proposing. So let me just review what the council said to us when, uh, in terms of expectations. They wanted an open, transparent process with clear communication throughout. They want to be respectful of input from immediate neighborhoods, uh, neighbors, but recommend that this property is of citywide importance. Uh, they want to understand the market conditions and opportunities. Uh, they expect that the developer will understand and promote the city's vision and goals. And that was a comment that we heard from a number of you as well, that if we're going to go through this process, they want to make sure that it's taken seriously. And they want to take full, op uh, full advantage of this opportunity. Uh, they also want to develop in accordance with a master plan that incorporates open spaces, trails, amenities, and community parks, and potentially gathering places. You're going to see on these maps that there's some little cartoons about what that could be. There's absolutely no decisions that have been made about that. You know, there may be a ball field shown somewhere just to show you the scale of the space. That's not, that's not a real proposal. It's just illustrative at this point. Um, there would be some move up housing, but also offer housing choices with design elements that create a cohesive image and character to the entire neighborhood. Uh, not cookie cutter. Many of you said that in the terms of not Woodbury. Um, 
So want to make sure that it's a designed neighborhood, a strong focus on environmental stewardship, sustainability, and healthy living. So one of the things that I shared with you at the, at the meeting back in January is that while we've got a great deal of design work to, to do and a lot of details to work out, the basic idea is to move away from this being zoned all for multi-use business to having essentially a residential neighborhood on this portion of the site transitioning to the multi-purpose business park with the new investment that's coming with Imation and really concentrating retail in this location. We don't anticipate, I, th I think there may be one small neighborhood commercial use that's shown on one of those drawings, but we really think we really think the retail is going to be concentrated down in this area. So I think, again, the devil's going to be in the details. We're going to go through lots of different iterations, but that's the basic idea of how the site would lay out. So again, back in January, you, many of you were here. Uh, we went through that process, and I want to just summarize the themes that we heard from all of the input that we received. Uh, we asked you about the planning process, and you said you wanted it to be transparent. You wanted to have a citywide vision. Uh, take advantage of market conditions. Uh, no winners or losers, find mutual benefits. Uh, and again, that the developer would incorporate the city's vision with respect to land uses. Uh, land use issues, you said maintain green space, uh, compatibility with adjacent single family homes, provide a mixture of housing type, styles, and price points, and again, our aversion to Woodbury, um, and mixed opinions on retail. Uh, roads, trails, and transit. Concern was expressed about speeds on Helmu Avenue, uh, that it was too fast. Uh, a lot of support for more walking and bike paths, uh, connections to other trails and sidewalks, and to find ways to slow traffic on 40th Street. As far as the neighborhood, we asked you what you thought defined a great neighborhood, and the kinds of themes that came out were unique, a distinct character, part of the city as a whole, a welcoming place, uh, specifically fix the ugly chain link fence and that this could be the pride of the city. With respect to parks, uh, natural resources and amenities, uh, places to walk dogs and a large dog park, preserve wildlife and green space corridors, address localized flooding near wetlands, and places to hike uh, and bike. So again, from that, we took all that input and, and the input that we received from the Planning Commission City Council and prepared some goals. We then met with the Planning Commission and City Council and went through some pretty rigorous revision to the goals and the council ultimately ended up adopting those goals. And those are the goals that we use to develop these very high level preliminary uh, concepts. So with your indulgence, I'm just gonna read through these quickly. In terms of general goals, take full advantage of the opportunity to master plan this large property to build the city's tax base and create an attractive, cohesive neighborhood efficiently served by public infrastructure and enhanced by an interconnected multi-purpose open space system. To conduct an effective and organized planning process that includes timely opportunities for participation of all stakeholders and supports the city council's decision making at every project milestone. With respect to land use, realize the opportunity to reimagine the city's preferred land uses on this property and re-guide the land use designations to reflect this new vision. Achieve a successfully integrated mixture of land uses that responds to market opportunities and takes full, up, up, takes full advantage of the property's potential. With respect to housing, provide a variety of housing choices, types, styles, and price points to serve current and future residents' needs and preferences at different stages of their life cycle with an emphasis on market-supported move-up housing. Select housing products that support Oakdale's economic development opportunities with an eye toward the future expansion of the Slumberland campus. With respect to transportation, design and build a network of roadways and trails to create a multimodal transportation system with connections to parks, the Gateway Trail, employment and shopping opportunities. Emphasize accessibility for people of all ages and abilities. Fully support pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure to promote active and healthy living. With respect to parks, open space and amenities, Create and maintain an integrated system of active and passive recreation spaces. Conserve, restore, and augment natural resources, including native and indigenous trees and grasses to support wildlife habitat, clean air, and water quality. Explore the opportunities for innovative natural resource-based stormwater management. With respect to sustainability and resiliency, 
promote inclusivity and fairness in all land use, housing, and transportation decision making, plan infrastructure to promote resilience and sustainability, promote healthy living, locally grown food, clean energy, air, and water quality. So how can you participate tonight? Again, there's these three stations. Each one will have all three of the concept plans. Um, there's also a worksheet and a comment card, as I said at the beginning. Uh, we would encourage you to, to uh, respond to those questions and give us any other comments that you have. Uh, as I said at the beginning, every comment that gets, gets received gets recorded and gets shared with the Planning Commission and City Council. So the input that you give will definitely go to the elected officials that are making these decisions. And again, just some cautionary things. It's always easy to kind of misunderstand where we are in the process. These are very preliminary idea sketches. There's nothing here that's being proposed. This isn't a development application. These are design and planning ideas to test how and different ways in which we could achieve the goals that have been identified. So I would just say don't overreact to something. If you, if you don't like something, tell us you don't like it. If you like it, like it. But we don't want to be in a situation where people think that these are kind of further along in the process than they are. We have an awful lot of work to be done. We have to figure out development costs. We have to figure out economic feasibility. There's a lot of steps in the process before there would be an actual development proposal. So again, we're inviting you to participate in the design process, not comment on a proposed plan. We're not anywhere near that point yet. So again, things to remember, the city is considering an amendment to its comprehensive plan, not reviewing a development application. There's many steps between now and then. Uh, the other thing that's at a very important point that we're working through uh, Any time a property owner has a piece of ground that they want to subdivide, the city has a park dedication ordinance, and the city has the authority to require a portion of that land to be set aside for park. Uh, the formula for the city's park dedication is related to the, the unit count. And so, to a certain extent, the number of multifamily residential units has a direct result, a direct relationship to the amount of acreage. So this is going to be an iterative process as we work through it. Um, so again, that park dedication ordinance formula is based on the types and number of units. If the city were to choose to plan for more park than they could get through dedication, then they'd have to find, they'd have to acquire that property and have to find another source of uh, revenue to do that. So this isn't a public hearing. I'm happy to answer a couple questions, but we're going to have people at every one of these stations, and we certainly can, and we invite your questions there. Any clarifying questions for now? Can you define market-based move up? Uh, I would say that um, it's probably in the 350 to 450 dollar range and up. At this point, would they have any idea of what builders would be considered building here? Would it be Ryan, Robin, Robert, Thomas, Kulti, and be there yet? They're not there yet. Mr. Cucciarello is in the back of the room. He, I'm sure he'd be happy to chat with you about who he's talked to. Yeah. Can you clarify the process? Typically, doesn't a developer come to the city with their proposed development plan? And it seems like that, you know, what we're doing now is coming up with a plan. What is the city's responsibility? Is the developer then tied to whatever the city decides through this process? Every city in the metropolitan area has a comprehensive plan. They're, it's mandatory. And so the city uh, is required by law to do a comprehensive plan, and that comprehensive plan identifies which land uses are going to be where um, and how to serve it with infrastructure, a parks and open space system, and so forth. The only thing that's different between what we're doing now is that we're doing a more detailed analysis, a more detailed, as I said, like the special area plan where we did imation. Mm -hmm. So if you choose one, the city chooses one of these three plans. Uh, is the developer then tied to that? Decision? The city would zone the land in accordance with the comprehensive plan, and then the developer would come in like any developer and make an application and demonstrate that their plan is consistent with the zoning. So it may not be as laid out in any of these plans? No, they will, they'll do their own separate plan. But when we'll, one of the things that we'll decide as this process comes together is what level of detail is included in the so comprehensive plan. Is the city actually deciding then these three plans? First of all, do they want to change the comprehensive plan? because it's currently the only thing you can use it for right now is a multi-purpose business park. We're confident after 25 years that there isn't someone who's going to come and build a mansion. So that seems a given, okay. and then taking it to the next level. So that's a pretty big 
decision, right? Uh, it's 250 some acres, and so the city wants to really do a good job of figuring out all the possibilities uh, and include the community in the process of that thought process, and then ultimately changing the comprehensive plan if it chooses to do so. Uh -huh. But the developer could come and have a different schedule, meeting whatever the city decides on a comprehensive plan to rezone this. Well, yeah, anybody can ask anything. I mean, I, someone I could come with your plan. house and then say you want to do the Mall of America. I'm not saying it's going to get approved. We're just getting into a lot of detail and laying out. I think the expectation probably is that it's going to be that plan. So just wanted to you know, make sure. Well, let me, let me be clear. By the time we get a refined concept plan, we'll know what the street system is. We'll have a good system, we'll have a good sense of what the trail system is. We'll know what the pattern of parks and open space will be. And we'll have a good idea of which types of housing will be in what portions of the site. So it, it is a fair amount of detail. But the developer is still going to come in with specific builders, specific housing units, and they may have different ideas. There's going to be a, a good give and take between the developer and the city council, as there should be. Any other? Yes. Well, is there a timeline that where this is going to be dropped in? You know, we're going to do this by the state. You know, where they plan on developing all that. Can I can I tell you when the development will actually happen? Well, no, but I mean, do they have a date in mind that we're going to get this plan figured out by? Yeah, it's, it's like August that we would be at a point where we would be taking it through the Metropolitan Council to get the plan blessed. Yes, sir. Does the city own the land now or 3M? 3M Foundation owns the land, and they put it up for sale. That was kind of my question. Who is 3, who is 3M actually selling the property to? Uh, the 3M, uh, Mario Cucciarella from Maplewood Development has a purchase agreement with 3M Foundation. And he has agreed to participate in this process. Um, the city is... Uh, He's here, he's at these meetings. We meet with him before these meetings. He has input at every step along the way. But it's the city's, it's the city council's decision whether they change the plan or not. So it's not a dumb deal. I thought, the, I, thought I was told that 3M sold this property. 3M has a purchase agreement and with, the with the developer. And if the developer secures the approvals that they need to go forward with the project, then they would purchase the property and go forward. And then how much of the acreage is actually buildable? There's a lot of wetland down there. You know, I think that'd be a better question to ask looking at the maps with okay. somebody who knows the site well. Okay. And there should be somebody like that at every one of the stations. Who did you say they have a purchase agreement with? The 3M Foundation? Yeah. Maplewood Development. So that's Kucherella? Yes. Ready? Break. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't like it. Right. Um, no, I don't. What is there? Uh, I like this one, though. Long ways full. I mean, shovels in the ground. Yeah. They have a date? Well, I think the thinking is by August, September this year, there'll be a, a final concept plan. Mm -hmm. The comprehensive plan will get amended, and then Mr. Cucciarella, uh, working with national and local builders, will come in and propose maybe for this piece. Yes. And, you know, he'll submit to council, we review it, they'll approve it, he'll start construction. Yeah, in the spring of next year. There's other communities. And I'm, you probably have a nice garage door. But if I had my druthers, I'd rather look at a vista of, op of open space beyond. That's what we're trying to do with that. When you're doing grids and blocks, harder to do that. <clears throat> like almost impossible, but sometimes you can do it. And this one is a bit of a hybrid of, of those things. And, <clears throat> and in the pursuit, frankly, of financial viability and not driving the prices so high, no one can afford this. There are circumstances where we just can't afford to do tees into all kinds of open space. This has a hundred less homes than this thing. That matters. That matters a lot. When it, so now the, again, be patient. This is just this is a, this is very early concepts. Trying to figure out 
how to respond to the city council's request and the planning commission, and yet this the 3,000 ton gorilla in the corner is the marketplace that we cannot ignore. Anyway, so, so come to this one. If you just step out of the store a minute and, and look up in the air, how do you cause people to think that, wow, parks really matter? Here. Well, that one does it because you can't get away from it. You're in it all the time. And, and it, 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 this one's been discussed. Well, those are houses in a park. It's not a housing project with a park. That's a park with houses. This is sort of the same thing, not so much. And this is, this is again, a hybrid. But this is a road system that tries to make somebody on, on, on a ground level you can't go too fast around curves. And if you've got all these intersections, even if some of them are only crossing walkways, and maybe the walkway, walkways are roughed up a little bit, maybe they're brick, maybe they're not, maybe it's just pattern snap, maybe it's colored differently, and or maybe it rises up ever so slightly and goes back down. Not so much that the fire, that the uh, snow plows will whack it off, but somehow or another. Any, anyway, the end result of trying to do all of these obvious things and subtle things is to again pump traffic. And why is that? Because we want to invite people and we want parents to know that they're safe and their children are safe when they go use these trails. Otherwise, you just build it for nothing. People won't show up because people don't trust it. So anyway, that that's this business of this arcing road system. And it, it, yeah, okay, it looks nice from the air. It might be Washington, D.C. Well, there's lots and lots of places around the United States done like this. But it's about what is it at ground level? Why do this? And there, there are reasons to do it. It's, it's traffic calming. And this is a subtle way of saying it's about the park. If you, there's no place to go there. If you cross over, you have to get on Hadley and go up to 50th or up to um, 14th. You can't go out this way. Lake, uh, Lake Jane, Lake Jane um, gets out to Jamaica, Jamaica. Yeah, so, so what you should write on here is traffic concerns because there'll be a traffic study done. Mm -hmm. This road can handle a lot of traffic. A lot of traffic. Sure. So it's, 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 but it handles traffic to a point, and from that point on, it's congestion. And, 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 well, this project is going in. This part of all of the revision, is this road going to be part of that? Yes. yes. Okay. This is a county road. And so after tonight, in a couple of weeks, we'll meet with the county again and we'll talk to them about this. Yep. Well, what I can tell you about it, okay, yeah. when you look at the market study, it was looking at anything from like, like 275 3 up to 550. Absolutely. You know? All Thus, there could be some rental towns where you're paying, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks. We're going to go from very nice country. Mm -hmm. But what the council wants to do is provide a variety of housing styles and price points. So it's just not the cost. Is what it is. I understand. The cost is what it is. But I don't know where the cost comes from because it's a hundred yards from here. Well, you got to write that down. Write that down. It's not like when you were saying that. It's a hundred and twenty-one yards. Well, I thought you were saying that's all you wanted. I thought so. No, that's not. And there's nothing here at all. I had to pay for my own switch. And so I don't know where the.